Okay, welcome. So this tutorial is going to be super handy for everyone who's either a pro or to brand spanking new squeaky clean beginner. Now, if you're wanting to use the native Shopify meter fields and you've previously seen some of my tutorials, you would see that although the process is not complicated, it is a little bit long winded. This tutorial solves that problem because you Desley have gone ahead and added a whole host of brand spanking new custom attributes which will make your process and your life so much, so much easier. Think of these new attributes as basically shortcuts for everything I've taught previously on this channel. So the stuff that I've done before is still relevant. However, this new attributes mean that you don't have to go and add five or six custom attributes to do one thing. You can literally just add one. So yeah, it's going to make your life a hell of a lot, hell of a lot easier. Okay, before we get started, if you want to support the channel, there's a few different ways. Firstly, the simple way, and it's free, is just to hit that subscribe button. And secondly, if you're feeling generous, then uh, yeah, please buy me a coffee and super, super appreciate it. Anyway, let's get started. So as you can see, I'm still using that previous theme loosely defined, which is just basically one of the Webflow starter projects. And I've just added a few extra areas. Now, given how many new attributes have been added. It would take me a hell of a long time to go and manually do this bit by bit. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created a host of different example containers with various different pre-configured elements just so that I can get you into the process and you can use this as a bit of a reference sheet so that uh, it makes your and my life easier and it means you don't have to sit and listen to me waffle on for hours and hours and hours. Okay, so to get things started, we'll just do the meter field text object. So we want to basically be able to control this little text in the red box using a meter field. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. This process pretty much is the same for all the objects down here, except for one or two small variants. And I've kind of alluded to those later on. But what we got here is we have a name and a value. And those are the custom attributes, things that you need to configure. So what we'll do is we'll select the object that we want to edit, we're going to add it a custom attribute, and we'll put in here product hyphen meter field. We will then specify that it's a text object. So colon and it's text. And this meter field key is what we create in Shopify when we create a meter field. So we'll quickly do that now. So head on over to Shopify, go down to settings, scroll down to meter fields, and then we will click onto products, add a definition, and we'll call this one text example. Okay, and then we see here we have text underscore example. This portion here is the namespace. We can change the namespace, but we would need to use an additional custom attribute to do that. So for the time being, we're just going to use custom because it matters not really. So we'll just go text underscore example. We'll copy that, no dot. And we need to say the type, which is a single line text. And you can have a list of values or one value. We're just going to have the one and we'll hit save and we have it. And you can see there's the full meter field, but we just need text underscore example, and we'll just copy that, making sure that these are 100% one-to-one correct, otherwise it's not gonna work. And then just plop that into the value. So text underscore example, and you are good to go. Now this process pretty much continues all the way through where there's some variants, and I've tried to pick out the ones that I think I could maybe be a little bit of a stumbling block, but other than that, it's pretty much consistent all the way through. So let's keep going down. Now, element visibility controlled through Boolean meter field. Now, previously what you would have had to do is use a liquid if statement and then pass in the meter field. And that's fine because you can still do that, but now there's an easier way to do it. All right, so if I wanted to show and hide this red thing, all I needed to do is select the element again and then just plop in the product hyphen meter field and then tell it what the type is. So colon, and then it's a Boolean, so it's a true or false thing. So it will create that if this thing is true, then show this particular content. Okay, so all we're having to do here is literally select that, go into the custom attribute. We've got product meter field Boolean, and then I've just gone here and added the value of Boolean underscore example, which again, if I go back into the meter fields, you'll see here it says Boolean example, and there is our meter field key. Alrighty, so that's that one done. So now what will happen once that gets exported, it will just literally drop that thing into a Shopify if statement. So yeah, true or false. All right, 
Uh, now, meter field driven images. This is where this new process really starts to shine. This used to be a multifaceted approach. So you used to have to get the, the meter field value. Then you'd have to assign it using the where to the image source and then put another HTML attribute in order to then get things like the alt text. Bit of a faff. Now you can do it with one, one custom attribute. And all we're literally doing is again, product meter field, the type is an image and we just give it our meter field value again. So it's literally onto the image and you can see here, all I've done here is product meter field image. And then again, the value is image underscore example. Something to note when using these meter field driven images is that when you export it, it's going to come out with an image URL size set as master, which is obviously the largest image that you can get, you know, basically it will give it the full, full image resolution. And for an image this size, you really don't want to be loading that because it's going to impact your page speed. So what we need to do is add another custom attribute. Now, Previously, in other tutorials, I've used something called image sizes, and then you can pass through a different source set, but that doesn't work with, with these. So we have to use another one called dimension, and we can just put it across one of Shopify's dimension things. So like I could say compact, for instance, or if we wanted to give it a very specific pixel dimension, we can say something like 450 X. And then if I added another 450, it would be 450 by 450. And if I did it something like this, X by 450, it doesn't really care about what the width is. It will only give you the pixel height. So yeah, so that's pretty handy to know and it will help your page speed. So do it. All right, on to the next one. Okay, so next one, this is a big one. So if you watched my linked tutorials or the linked add to cart tutorials, you could know it was quite a faff in order to get this to work with lots and lots of custom attributes. But yeah, now it's no longer like that. Now it literally is one meter field again, and we can utilize the Webflow collection list and drive that off of a meter field. So this is massive and it makes your life super easy to create it, like linked products or if you wanted to shop the look or whatever. So yeah, so all I have here is a collection list and on the collection list wrapper, you're just adding in this new meter field, collection meter field, not product, collection meter field. This doesn't work with a product one, okay? It has to be, if you're using collection items, you need to use the collection meter field. Right, and in terms of the value, we need to be a bit more specific. So we're not just passing the key like we've done here. We're needing to pass this full string of value here. So it's the product.meterfields.custom, which is your namespace. And then we need to add in the meter field value here. So let's say, or linked underscore products. And then we again, if you've watched the previous tutorial I did on this, we still need to get that dot value. So we still need to get the values off of it. So it's there. So basically if we just copy that and when we go into our collection list wrapper, so the top one, we'll go into here and you can see a collection meter field, product meter fields, custom. And then here I've got the linked products dot value. All right. And then what you can do is you can go and you can use your CMS items to bind everything up without having to worry about going and trying to look up the liquid objects or whatever it is on the lines of that. Obviously you can still use that if you need to. So that's why I'm not gonna take down the previous tutorial because it is handy to kind of know how to build this manually if you need it. So that's now done. So now if we look at how this meter field is created in Shopify, so we go back into here and if I go down to linked products, you'll see that it is a type of product and it is specified as a list product. So you have a single and multiple products. So if we go and create a new one here, for instance, I'll just go blah, blah, blah. And if I type the select thing, and if I go down here and I choose product, I can choose a single product or a list of products. Now, if you're wanting to do a list of products, choose a list of products. So not complicated. All right, so that's all sorted. And remember, just collection meter field. Okay, so now onto meter field linked product or products without a collection list. So what we're needing to do here, this is basically just creating our own custom for loop, which will spit out whatever we want. Now we have two different things we can use here. We have product and products. So pretty self-explanatory product gives you a single and product gives you multiples. So products is a list of items and product is a single. You can select one product and you just pick and choose as you want. How we interact with those, it's the same. And so if we want to get, say for instance, let's get this started. So we'll do this as a single product. You can see here, all I've got is product meter field and I'm telling it it's the type of product and I'm just passing it the meter field key. And then if I wanted to like, for instance, do the image, basically what we're needing to do is call in a liquid object and if you've seen previous tutorial, you will see it be familiar with this. But this time we're looking for product item as the object. We're going featured image and then 
we're saying it's an image URL and we're saying it's the size of compact. Compact can be large, grande, whatever you want to do, master, just depending on what your requirements are in terms of scale. Then what we're doing is we're saying, where does that need to go? And we need to put it into the, the source of the HTML so that it can pick that up and plop it into the, so it knows that this image URL is this particular object. And then in the HTML attributes, we want to add the alt text side of things. So not overly complicated. And then the same things we start to look at, like the text-based elements, we just literally go liquid object and then product item and then we wanted the title, which is the Shopify object for title. And then here we have the liquid object for product item dot price. And then we're telling it it's a money object. So we're just using the money filter to kind of convert it. Otherwise, it'll just be a, a number with no, no currency formatting. Okay, so that's that. Now, when we start looking at multiple products, it's pretty much the same process. The only real difference here is that we have products. Okay, so same things here. We have liquid object. We're telling where it is. It's in the source and we're giving the alt text as an HTML attribute. And then here we are saying liquid object and product item dot title. So same thing. These dot titles and stuff like that. They're really easy to find. There's a thing called the Shopify cheat sheet. I'll link it below. And it gives you all the various different product items that you can look into. So if you are building something like this and you're wanting to do something a little bit more custom and seeing what information you can get, that will be your best place to start. Okay, so that's that now. So what will happen with this one is, as you can see, it's on the multiple product grid. And for the one item, so the, the whole item, if you're adding that particular meter field here, this products one, it puts it into a for loop. So then it just spits it out. So it will just, for every image that you've selected in the product list, it will just create another one of those. So pretty handy. Now, before we convert and show you how this is all working, there's a number of other custom attribute types that are available. Here's a quick overview list. If you struggle with any of them and you want me to go into them in a bit more detail, please let me know below and I'll do that. But basically what you can see here, we have file, we have color, we have background color, we have border color, we have date, we have date, time, number, collection, collections. So again, the hint is there. So collection is one and collections is multiple. Uh, page, pages, same thing, URL and variant. So those are really useful and we can use them in multiple different things. And finally, this is not just for products. And this is what's really cool is this whole same type of structure can be used across product meter fields, collection meter fields, pages meter fields and variant page meter fields. So when we go and we create a meter field, you would have seen here, we would be able to choose where we want in the store, we want that meter field to be affected. So if we're doing like a, a, a page and we want a whole host of meter fields like an author name or the date and time it was published or whatever we wanted to place, we can utilize the same process to do that, which makes your life so much easier because you don't have to remember all of the liquid code. So massive pat on the back to the Udesley team. Okay, so finally, let, let's convert and I'll show you how this all works. Run our conversion and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so now we're all done. So we'll just view our store and we'll go and select one of the products. All right, and we can see there's nothing here and that's because our meter fields haven't been populated. So if we open up our product page, uh, we'll open up our awesome and scroll down and you can see a text example. So we'll say, hello world and hit save. If I refresh it, we'll say, hello world. So cool, that's working. So now the other ones are pretty straightforward. So the next one was our Boolean example. Click on true. Hit save, refresh a few times, and there we go. Show and hide this block is now visible, so awesome. Okay, so last few ones. So we have multi-product example and single product example. So again, we can now, because we've done that single one, we will just choose uh, breathtaking. And for the multi example, we will just choose a few different ones there. Uh, for our image example, we'll just select a file. We'll just choose this particular image. And for our linked products, we will choose three other products that we're using in that collection. So we'll hit save. Now all of those should be authored and we go down here and if I hit refresh, and here we are. So we have our image that's been, been authored. So there we go. And we have our using collections and down here we can see that our non-collection item ones are working as well so we've got breathtaking it's pulling it through it's printing through the price correctly and then we have our three that we've selected which is good and yeah that's it so yeah massive massive time saver if you, you you wouldn't have known this because it's literally just been launched if you haven't already please um subscribe and uh yeah it's coming up to christmas so I'm probably not going to be doing another tutorial between now and then 
Uh, I might be able to squeeze another one in. And uh, if not, I will see you in the new year. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye.